It's time for The Kickwits, the show where we highlight awesome projects. Every episode, we interview amazing creators and showcase their work. Or these three guys I got with me right now. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and on this episode of The Kickwits, we are talking with Stephen J. Holodinsky. Hey, Stephen. John Freider. Hey, John. What the hell is a kick? I'll tell you in a minute. Ed, Edward Clower. Hey. And these are these are all the folks, uh, and I'm part of them too, part of the uh, Aethercon online convention. Uh, they just asked what the Kickwits are. And if, uh, if you watched our show and you have not have not caught one of our Kickwits episodes, it's it's a, like a side – it's like a side project of the Mythwits. Uh, we had a lot of people coming on wanting to promote things. Um, but our main show is mostly uh, – it's, it's not really a promotional show. We do have to do some promotion. But it's mostly like a conversation and, and, and to help people learn things. Uh, but we had a lot of people coming on. We do like to promote things. So the Kickwits is the, the – the, it's like a kick, Kickstarter is where the name kind of comes from because uh, that's, mostly, that's mostly what we did. Uh, anybody who's kicking a project off or, or kicking something loose, you know. Uh, and So that's why we call it the Kickwits. It's sort of like a nickname. So anyway, uh, yeah, so we're talking about AetherCon and in particular AetherCon 7, which is coming up. If you look up in my window right Right, y'all. You'll see the dates, November 9th to 11th of this year. It's fantastic. It's all weekend long. But uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let Stephen. I'm going to let Stephen take this and tell us what exactly AetherCon is. And Stephen, if you could just throw a tiny bit of history in there so people know how it got started. Like how did how did it come about and uh, and what is it? Well, I'll give you a little bit of history on that, but then I'm going to turn it over to Ed. Just cause. Aethercon mm -hmm. uh, has uh, it's Aethercon seven, so it has been around for seven years. Uh, it got started basically for you know there was a few reasons, uh, but the two biggies were the fact that uh, I had taken a sabbatical from gaming for a while. I went to travel Europe, was over there for a decade, came back, and this was. Just the time when, you know, the internet was starting to explode in terms of uh, communication uh, by the everyman. And what I noticed in a lot of the, the, the forums and chat rooms that I frequented coming back, because I didn't have a, a, a game store in our town. There wasn't really a gaming scene in our town anymore by the time I had gotten back. So I, I, I was going in these things to find my gaming fix. Uh, is that there was an awful lot of addition wars, there was an awful lot of uh, my game's better than your game, or, or, you know, your game sucks. And I said, you know, I, I, if, there's a lot of competition for the entertainment dollar. And if I didn't know any better, if I was just someone coming in off the street and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to try this role-playing game thing. I think I'll go to this place where, because it says they talk about that there. And if I would have gone into that, and this is what I had heard, all this vitriol, I would have turned around and walked back out and parked my money elsewhere, because I wouldn't want anything to do with that. And I, you know, my feeling was, this industry is going to die if it keeps going in that direction. Okay. And I want to do something to to change that. And the other big reason that we I you know, we decide to do this is that you know there's an awful lot of people out there, myself included, who for whatever reason can't get to real life conventions. You know, be it lack of transportation, lack of money, uh, lack of mobility. You know. Uh, or medical, you know, some other medical condition, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, anxiety disorders, all these kinds of things where, you know, they're gamers, they enjoy gaming, they want to game, but they can't go to these places to do it. And I figured, well, you know, this is a way for those people to get the convention experience without having to deal with those boundaries that normally would not allow them to do so. Right. You know. Um, Ed, yes. what can you add to that? Because you probably add lots. Um, well, yeah, I got a few thoughts. So 
like Stephen said, this is a, a, a convention that takes accessibility sort of to the next level. Uh, if you can't get to the standard traditional physical, everybody gather up at some convention center or hotel or something like that convention and meet physically with people because of you know, limitations of geography or limitations of, of economics or limitations that you might have in, in your physical or mental health or any other reason. This is an opportunity for you per, to participate in the role playing game convention environment without having to do that. Uh, we have kind of a no borders, no boundaries philosophy behind this. So you'll be able to actually interact with people from other parts of the world, uh, people from different cultures, people from different environments um, with different you know, mindsets and different play styles and be able to get in there and really experience the role playing role playing convention event with all the same sort of things that you would get at a traditional con but without having to leave you know the environment that you're comfortable in or even if you're somebody who is economically restrained if you can do something as simple as get to a local library with an internet connection and at a computer that you can use there none of the requirements for the event require you to download any software um, you'll be able to play it on any computer that can get online yeah yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah absolutely and that's, and that's wait, what the heck why am i echoing an excellent question oh uh, <laughs> anyway that's, <laughs> no no it's fine it's I, it's just sometimes hangouts does that weird thing so so yeah, so it's it's a great convention in the fact that um, you know you have accessibility for whatever reasons, right? That anyone can come and and you know sometimes people aren't comfortable. You know there are there are, especially with some of the I don't know some of the behavior that's, that we've seen at a convention. Some people are just like I really just turned off to the whole thing, you know. And this way they don't have to be. You're, it's it's as safe as your own home. You know what I mean? So if you have any if you have any uh, uh, issues with that, you know, and some people, you know, they have a bad experience. They don't want to go back, but they, this way they don't have to miss out. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, you know, you touched on it. Uh, well, you both did how, how the technological, I mean, there's nothing you have to install. I mean, that's, um, 95% true. Okay. Uh, we do offer Skype as one of the choices in audio, but Pretty much every computer you buy these days comes with Skype pre-installed. Right. So, you know, unless unless you're buying a refurbished computer with with like absolutely nothing installed on it, uh, you'll have it. <laughs> right. You know, there's there's going to be very very few instances where you would actually have to install Skype, but right. everything else is browser based, which is basically email address. Uh, password, username, and Bob's your uncle. Yeah. You know. Yep. So that so so we, I think we kind of touched on on the what it is and the why, um, but then you know so there's there's sort of that the how does this all work like like how do we how do we make this happen you know how do how do you have just how do you have how do you attend an online convention you know so there's the main portion of this is there's a website which everything kind of hubs out of which is the aethercon.com website um, and you know all the stuff is listed there and if you want to go look at one of the panels or the Q&A's or play a game uh, you can go there and it'll direct you to where you need to be and what, what you need to do there's the vendor hall we'll get into all this stuff but it's basically you can do everything through the website uh, you know and, and we use resources like uh, YouTube of course so you know all the the live videos and stuff are done via YouTube and they're embedded into um, they're embedded into uh, the Aethercon site um, yeah we're good we're good trust me <laughs> I got I got a message behind the scenes we're good it's all good I'm, I'm using I use a different process so uh, at any rate uh, the the everything is is broadcast through YouTube for the most part for the live videos um, and people can even ask questions and such um, now the website keeps getting updates you keep adding stuff to it Stephen 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's one thing I do want to just jump back to a little bit when you said uh, the main the 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 site acts as a hub. Uh, if you go to the website now, you'll see the news feed. That's will be the thing that dominates the front page. During AetherCon weekend, that comes out, and we slap in a different front page. And that front page has all the different tavern icons on it, plus a bar where okay, you know, here's all here's your gaming schedule and what have you. And, but if you want to go see a panel or you want to go vote in the miniatures competition or the speed paint duels, or if you want to watch speed paint duels, all those taverns, and I say that in quotes, they're all basically YouTube on air rooms, but I mean, for our intents and purposes, they are taverns. Uh, and all those tavern signs are there, and all you do is click on that tavern sign, and into that tavern you go to take part in that activity that is there. All right. Um, in any case, and I have forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> the new stuff. drinking going on in these taverns, which I think is the important thing to say here, and perhaps there should be. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could figure out how to serve alcohol, right? <laughs> well, if you can do it online, you can do anything online. Trust me. Right. Yeah, that would be the best. Um, right, yeah, so I'm... Folks who deal with me on a reg on a regular basis understand that I will forget words and use nonsensical ones to take their place. Uh, so that's just kind of a um, the cost of doing business with me. <laughs> you have to guess what I'm trying to say sometimes. Anyway, sorry, you were going to say something. Oh, uh, who me? Oh, um, yeah. So, so the um, so. Let's just let's get into a little bit with the with the with the fest halls because this kind of this kind of segues right into the fest halls this this technology. So, in the fest hall, we have we'll have panels with um, multiple uh, industry guests. So there'll be like a themed panel, like say horror or sci-fi or or how to build a town or something like that. And then we have on um, we'll have three industry guests who have been kind of vetted for that question. So if it's horror, you know, might be might be Mike Mason from Chaosium, might be uh, somebody from uh, um, I don't know uh, what's another one of those uh, with what was that one Delta Green, um, something like that. And it'll Shane be three Ivy. people, yeah, like Shane Ivy, right? It'll be three people who who know a lot about writing horror in games, and then there'll be a moderator, somebody like me, who will then moderate this panel and ask questions and such and we'll all talk about um about you know tips just like if you go to a convention and you see a panel you know i mean like a regular you know in-person convention same thing uh and then we also do q and a's where we'll have on uh one or a couple people maybe i think it's up to three or four uh guests from a uh a one company so that would be again we'd go let's go back to chaos say chaosium came on uh, you know, you'd probably have Mike Mason and a couple other guys or girls or whoever, whoever they bring along with them, um, who would uh, – who, then we would interview about Chaosium. And then the chat room is always open because it's YouTube Live. So you can get in there and you can ask questions too. So you're, you're – it's, it's – it's interactive, and then the moderator would would uh, go to the chat room and you know pick out questions that that they could ask as long as they fit you know sort of in the theme of things. Like you don't stop it and go back. Oh yeah, twenty minutes ago, such and such asked, unless it's appropriate. You know, what I mean, so so not all questions get asked, but we we do our damnedest to get them all in, um, and and to to address everything. You know, some people just make comments. Hey, Mike, love the uh, the module, blah blah blah, and I might tell them that, and you say, oh thanks, you know, whatever. But it's 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 like hanging out with them. You get to hang out with them. So if if you have a game creator that you like, uh, this is a great way to 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 um, interact with them on a personal level that you might not be able to at, at some cons. You may not even be able to do that um, without you know, being stalkery. Yeah. Without being stalkery, right? We want you to do that. You know, you are expected to do that. You know, it's it's invited. So uh, you do get that that level of interaction. So it, uh, those are really cool. And then, again, those are all done through YouTube Live, and you can either go to the web page and find out where they are, get the link, or you can watch it from there if you want, or you can go to the YouTube page and watch it. It'll be much uh, the same with uh, the Speed Pain Duels and the Wandering Toad. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to be uh, doing YouTube on air with those as well. Um, right. And you will be able to 
do the same. Watch the artists while they're painting and ask questions in the margin for the bartenders um, to ask the artists or answer themselves, depending on where they're directed. You know, right. who the questions for, uh, and uh, that's uh, that's kind. Of, it's a that's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good thing. We've been de developing quite the artist community out of that over the years. We've been doing it for a while, and it, and it's really starting. To, you know, it's 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 got a solid kernel of support that that are regulars that show up every year, and and it's building off of that. And that's kind of cool to see. Yeah, it really is. And we get some good guests, man. Um, speaking of that. Uh, I believe John's got a really neat list there of some guests and some panels. You know, if you want to uh, take a take a look through those and pick out a couple of panels you think are interesting and and the guests that are confirmed to be on them, don't give away the whole game, but you can give away some of it. Well, <laughs> if we stick with the stuff that's new and interesting, which I think is always a good idea, um, Andy Watson from Basic Games is signed on to do Life is a Hired Gun freelance RPG writing, which I know is going to go over well. Um, let's see. Kevin Glusing from Samurai Sheepdog is talking about magic item design. and uh, Let's see. Which is always an interest of mine because people design fantastic things to stick in their games that are horribly over or underpowered. Nothing seems to be perfectly balanced, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Steampunk RPGs is coming back. Andrew Raglan from Fantasy Games and uh, Lynn Hardy from uh, Modifius Entertainment will be doing that. And uh, let's see. Oh, good thing. Yes. Did you uh, do you have the copy with Ulysses uh, NA uh, confirmed on it? Did I give you that copy, or is that an older copy? Well, the one that you gave me was dated September nine. Ah, oh, geez, really? Oh, well, yeah. that shows us this one's also September nine. <laughs> <laughs> but it but it's been updated as of today. Fair enough. Um, I can tell you that. Uh, Bill Bridges of Ulysses North America. He's the line editor, or the you know the line developer for uh, Fading Suns. He's going to be in Hammers and Nails. What makes a good town? With nice. Bob Bledsaw II of Judges Guild. And uh, for those uh, younger folks who do not know who Judges Guild is, they did Judges... everything Traveler wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I remember those guys. Uh, Judges Guild were the folks who des um, designed uh, oh, City State of the Invincible Overlord. And at the time, this was like, there was nothing like this out there on the market. This was the penultimate city setting. It was massive and it was detailed. And you could run, I mean, it was water deep a decade and a half before water deep was water deep. Right, it was amazing, and uh, you know, so and he, you know, these guys were the folks that came up with that. So, uh, in terms of what goes into a city, he kind of knows what does. You know, um, sorry, go. You're going to say something, uh, John? And uh, one I'm actually looking forward to quite a lot is four on the floor and six in the chamber, post-apocalyptic RPGs. Uh, Vince Baker from Lovely Games will be there. Uh, yes. Scott Marshawn Davis from Happy Monster Press. Uh, and Ross Wilkin from Spilldale Studios is going to come by for that one. So that'll be a lot of fun to deal with. Yeah, we're real happy to have uh, Vince Baker from uh, from Lumpley. This is his first time with us, and we're really fortunate to have him. We look forward to that panel for certain. Um, okay. In that case... So then, you know, then there's the, uh, the the vendors hall. So we have we also have a, at the convention. There's a vendors hall that you can that you can peruse. Um, and who who's going to talk about that one? That will be me. Okay, pick me. Stevens pick up. Me. All right. <laughs> um, okay, the vendors hall. Uh, let, I'm just going to give you a, a, a number and a half here. Uh, our previous record for folks in the vendors hall. Uh, was 24, and that was last year. 
I can safely say that we will have a minimum of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So we've already broken the record. Uh, we have a bunch of other folks that were still waiting on their games to confirm their spot in the vendor's hall. They are expected to do so. They have about two weeks left to do it, and this is kind of what always happens every year. We get a whole slew of publisher games with like less than a week to go. It just, it's just how it happens. Um, but right now, even if we didn't get one of those games, we would have already broken the record. Um, so we're really happy with that. Uh, but but yeah, but yeah, that's kind of the thing you need to do in the vendor hall to get into the vendor hall. You need to run a game, and then you get all the other stuff. Uh, and and yes, you can't peruse their wares there. But there's a place you can actually interact and purchase them. And for that, this is probably a good idea that we uh, zing on over to Ed because Ed's got stuff to talk about in that, in that regard. Great. Okay. So, Bobble Brooks Bazaar. It's bizarre. <laughs> Bobble Brook runs it. <laughs> oh, the the end. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Holly Graves Bobblebrook. Oh, the the enterprising and hard drinking halfling. Yes, he <laughs> started was. off as a, a tent salesman, and he would go from town to town setting up tents. One day, he had the brilliant idea: I've got these tents set up. Why don't I give people the opportunity to use them as a bazaar? Well, we sat down with Hal DeGreas fairly recently, and after intense negotiations and several rounds of dwarven ale, we have worked out a, an exclusive deal with the halfway. So Bobble Brooks Bazaar has an awesome thing going with, for it. Um, from your perspective online, here's how it works. The vendors that are in Bobble Brooks Bazaar will have a special uh, Google Chat capability. So you'll see an indicator, uh, a sign lit up in their vendor space that says the vendor is available for discussion. So you can step in and talk to the publisher of your favorite game, uh, talk to the creator of, of a particular product that you like, and have a discussion with them about uh, just how neat you think it is, or some ideas that you might have, or questions that you have about a rule set, something like that. The neat part for you is the more time you spend with that vendor, the more time, the longer you're in that booth and the more you interact with them, they're going to be able to take your name and put it into a special drawing that we have. The Haldegreis Bobble Brook Memorial Prize Bundle. <laughs> it's not really a memorial. But it's the Haldegreis Bobble Brook Prize Bundle. Uh, the more you interact with the vendor in their booth, the more times they can put your name in for that drawing. And there are some fantastic prizes in that drawing, let me tell you. Uh, we have, you should tell us. <laughs> we have uh, hardcover rule books. Uh, we have, wow, uh, a copy of the uh, 1879 RPG London the Haunted City signed by the author. Andrew Ragland. Yes. We have uh, Spheres of Might hardcover. Uh, that's going to be in there also. Um, we have uh, Dyson Glory Core rule, core rule Book. Uh, Colonial Gothic Atlas is going to be in there as well. That's cool. Um, and you can be entered in it the more you interact with that particular booth. Uh, if you buy something, they'll throw your name in. If you sit there and have a decent conversation with them about their product, they'll throw your name in. It pays to shop. That's what the halfling always told us. We see that it's true. <laughs> that's funny. All right, so cool. So and and when they're in the the vendors hall, that's just basically um, basically talking with the shop owners and such. 
No, the Vendors Hall and Bobble Brooks are two different places. Okay, so Bobble. Okay, so Bobble Brooks Bazaar. They'll be talking. All right, all right yeah, wait, that's right. I'm sorry, I I screwed that up. Um, and do we want to go into um how that works? Uh, the Vendors Hall or no, no the Bobble Brooks Bazaar. Okay, well, he explained a lot of it. Basically, in order to get into the Vendors Hall, you need to run a game. In order to mm-hmm. get into Bobble Brooks Bazaar, you have to donate physical prize support. Right. Okay. And naturally, the more prize support you donate into different bundles, the more times you're going to show up on the bundle oh. pages, right? Oh, what I'm saying is, is that that people can interact with the people in the Bobble Brooks Bazaar, ah, right? Yeah. That's and so and far that's... as attendees are concerned. Yes. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to talk to the people who write the game, then you need, you would need to go to the Bobble Brooks Bazaar page and just take a look for those. The shopkeeper is in lights underneath the different logos. Now, here's the other cool thing about that, is if you look in the banner of our page, at the top right-hand side, top right-hand corner, uh, there is a Hall of the Greatest Bubble Brook Hotspot ads. Okay, now, in each of these, in each of these booths, uh, there, are, there can be up to three featured items. The, the, four, the first most item defaults to that, that sign and they rotate through it. Now, if you see something, you know, you can watch that and you say, okay, where's this? There's that, there's this, there's that. Oh, wait, I like this. And you click on that, it goes right into that booth. It's right. where you can purchase it. You know, it's very, it's very user friendly. It's very, uh, get me there in the littlest amount of clicks possible. Right, right, right. So, um, so then there's also, there's a, there's a program that goes with, this uh, goes with the convention, right? I mean, and that's um, there's a bunch of graphics that go in that, and uh, and you wanted to talk about how that's set up. Yeah, um, this is uh, something that we uh, put out on Halloween Day. Uh, it's uh, it's a culmination of about, I guess, three months worth of effort. Right. Uh, August. Yeah, about three months, um, and. You know, we have uh, a lot of interviews there. Uh, this year, if I'm not mistaken, we will have 14 interviews, two essays, uh, which is going to be, you know, it'll be the biggest one we've ever had. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it should be around 60 pages, all told. Uh, and I mean, uh, you know, our previous high was 10 interviews without essays. So there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who's going to be in there because that would be cheating. <laughs> uh, uh, what I, what I, geez, should I? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> um, I'm not going to say who's going to be in there, but uh, and I don't know if you can do this at your MP. Maybe you can. I am going to dump a wallpaper. Uh, on you, and I don't know if you can put it up in the screen or not. I might be able to. Where are you going to okay. send it to me? Uh, Facebook uh, Messenger? Good no. Good no. Okay. Up, 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 Go there. Go there. There. All right. So while Stephen's while Stephen's doing the go there, go there, go there. Uh, <laughs> So I, yeah. I think I think what's what's important to notice is that if you haven't picked this up yet is that you know everything that you would get at a normal convention at a regular conventional conventional convention conventional convention <laughs> uh, you are you're you're getting here you know you there, there are games there are and we haven't even we haven't talked we haven't talked about playing games yet but there are panels and Q and A's and there are you know, there is a there's a vendors hall there's a program that goes with it there's prize support and this isn't just uh, PDFs. I mean, I'm, some of those are prizes, but they're like real physical stuff that will be mailed to you. Prizes. Um, yep. So, all right. So, Steven shared it with me. Give me one second here. Yeah. Let me pull this up. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, I will do a screen share. So, let me do so, the, the cover art for eighth, the Aethercon 7 convention magazine is going to be based on that wallpaper. There you go. Uh, I'm going back. Hold on a second. Yeah. So, yes. there you, so there you go. 
And what is that, Steve? Who, who, what did, um, who did that art? Uh, that is done by Nicola Mercea. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Whom there will be okay. I'm going to give away that part of the game. Uh, there will be a feature on him in the convention magazine. Okay, he all right, is fantastic. A wonderful artist from Romania. Cool, cool. Okay, so there you go. Um, let me get back here. Okay, so uh, get back to my freaking show notes. There we go. Okay, so. <laughs> Sorry. So that you know that that leads me on to the to the uh you know we, we didn't put this in the notes but what about um what about playing RPGs? I mean, how's that how's that going to be accomplished? I uh, I mean, you want to play a role-playing game? Yeah, it's a gaming convention. How the heck are we playing games, Steven? Why the hell do you want to do that? Um uh, Ed? Sure. So you want me to talk about the mechanics or you want me to talk about what's available? Oh, uh, mechanics, mechanics, mechanics. Yeah, how, what's the sauce, man? How do they do it? So we have a, a we have a, a few different ways available that you can participate in games. A lot of them uh, go through uh, just Google Hangout, like we're doing here today. Uh, you got a video connection, and you go through a role playing game. Uh, some people use Roll Twenty because that's uh, browser based. And it's free access. Uh, they do have a paid subscription available, but you don't have to have that paid su- subscription to be able to play. Um, some people use uh, Discord just to do audio games. If they're using theater of the mind and they don't need things mapped out, then they can just do it over audio. Uh, am I missing any, Stephen? Um, well, there's, there's Google Hangouts and Roll20 for, for video options. And then in terms of audio, you you have four different options. You've got Roll Twenty's own audio if you want to use that. Uh, I can't say. I mean, there's a lot of people who give that a bad rap. They've done an awful lot with that since they first launched it, and I kind of think that the rep they have is from the first at the very the very beginning before they did all these upgrades on it. And I really think that. Uh, these upgrades have really helped that a lot. Uh, you can do uh, Google Hangouts with Roll20 in there. Uh, you can do Skype. And you can do Discord. So there's four different audio options. I keep forgetting about Skype. Yeah. But uh, it's, I mean, it's now owned by Microsoft, so I guess it's kind of hard. But oh well, never mind. Does. <laughs> <laughs> So does um, does it who who determines what platform you're going to use? Is it the game master, the person who starts yes. it? Okay, the game All master. Right. The game master has these options to choose from. All okay. of these are free, and all with the exception of Skype, which, as you mentioned, comes pre-installed on pretty much any computer you buy these days. They're all browser-based. There is right. no installation. There is no money that needs to change hands to use any of these. And, okay. and that's that's important because those are those have been two traditionally those have been two barriers that have killed an awful lot of online tabletop conventions. Yep. We were by no means the first. There were others out there ahead of us, but those were the hills they ended up dying on. Yeah. Either it was an ethical thing or a money thing. And we decided at the very beginning we're not gonna have those things be a factor. And and I'll tell you, if you know, in the past seven years, is it's light years ahead of where it used to be. You know, if you go back to when you for the first year you did this, I'm certain you had some issues with some of the uh, the the talking online stuff. Whereas, you know, now it's pretty every all these programs are pretty tight. Yeah, well, <laughs> there are many things we had issues with, technical or not. <laughs> in the first year I can only imagine. I can only imagine. We had issues with our issues. Uh, right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as we have grown, so has technology. And as a matter of fact, um, there's a panel that we're doing this year. This will be your second year for it. It's one of the last panels on Sunday. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, John, I think, well, I don't, maybe I have it up. Uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, no, not there. Let's go over here quick. Other most other. There it is. Ta-da. Okay, scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll up. Technologies and tabletops. How the computer has changed tabletop RPGing. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, one of the people that is confirmed there, I forgot to bolt him, uh, John, sorry, is Justin Mace okay. of Paths to Adventure. Uh, Justin, I mean... Justin is an amazing person in so far as just how much he knows about everything technical. Uh, there is, I mean, he he's very good at what he does in terms, you know, he is a cartographer. He also writes. But I don't think there is anything about the internet or the computer that he has not done on, <laughs> you know, during his time on this planet. Uh, you know, whether it comes to website construction or graphic design or server administration or coding. I mean, I've yet to find anything he hasn't done. I need him to come over here and look at my network because it's a little <laughs> shoddy. <laughs> All right, so yeah. uh, let so before uh, you know we've, we're got we're coming up on time in a few minutes. Let's talk about the artist enclave. Okay. Um, I can tell you that we should have 11 wallpapers this year. Um, you've seen seven of them as, as of yesterday. We are still waiting on a wallpaper from Bruno Balixa. We're still waiting for a wallpaper from uh, Florian Stitz. Bruno is, I believe, from Portugal. Florian is from Germany. Uh, Will O'Brien from Canada. And Chris Malador from the U.S. Those are the four we're still waiting on. Uh, for those of you who have been following us, uh, for a few years, you do know that Bruno's and Will's are, are just incredible. They're the kind of guy who, they're the kind of people who can just basically, you know, pull a, pull a, a Kleenex out of the box and in five, five minutes we'll have like this wonderful piece of art on it, you know, and they're, they're incredibly talented. Uh, we're, we are very fortunate to have them. This will be our first year of Florian Stitz. Chris, as you may or may not know, is our artist enclave coordinator, and he's been with us for a while too. And he he had an incredible uh, wallpaper last year uh, about a Noel Outrider, and it, it's one of his best, you know. And so we're expecting those are the four we're waiting for, and they're all going to be great ones. Now, when um, you say when you say these wallpapers, these are wallpapers that people can download and put on their computer, right? Yes, they they come okay. in three different sizes. They are free to download. Uh, and and if uh, you can you can get those on the downloads and media page, you can also get them on the artist enclave. And neat thing is, is when you go to the artist enclave and you click on, hey, well, there's uh, Eric Messner's latest wallpaper. Eric's a part of our our thing there this year as well. Well, you click on that and you can see a you know you can get a an enlargement of the one he did this year. But then you also see all the ones he's done in previous years. Okay, and right? you have and access you can, to all those. Yes, exactly. Okay. You, can, you can download any of those you want. Right? Oh, cool. In fact, I, I on my computer, I've got uh, a rotation of like something like thirty-five different wallpapers. I can't; uh, they're all great. Yeah, I, can't, I can't decide which one to put up there. I like them all. Uh, right. So, uh, <laughs> buppity ups. And now, there's a lot of uh, a lot of these folks you'll also see during the speed painting duels on Ethicon weekend. Uh, I mentioned that before. Uh, they get uh, 50 minutes and a one-line uh, descriptor of what they have to what they have to uh, do, uh, you know, with their digital paint, digital stuff, digital like uh, Photoshop and what have you. Um, and we flip flop back and forth between uh, the sharing screens with one, sharing screens with the second, sharing screens with the third. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, and those are 50 minutes. And so, I mean, it's neat because you only get to see one of them doing what they're doing while there's still two others. And then they flip to the next one. And oh, my God, geez, he's so far ahead of me. And, and it gets really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's watching artists under pressure. And it's, it's cool because all of the bartenders are art directors from different uh, game companies, right? So this is for them. It's a, it's a free scouting trip. You know, nice. they're there for three hours. They see nine different artists they may have not seen before. 
right? And say, you know, so, you know, at some point in time, like we've had, we've had art directors come to Chris later and say, yeah, we found this guy, that guy, or this girl uh, from your speed painting duels. Oh, nice. You know, and, and that's great. I mean, that's what we want to, that's the kind of thing we want to do is we want to develop this network. So this is a place where people can find gigs. Cool. Very cool. Edward, okay. you mentioned something? Um, yeah. There's a couple of other things that we didn't get a chance to talk about in regard to RPGs. Oh, okay. Um, in particular, um, we've got a lot of games already signed up. We, In addition to the organized play that we have with Pathfinder Society and the Indie Adventures League and such, we have already set up 50 open games. Um, some of these games are actually run by the publishers of the game. You may be able to sign up to play a game that's being run by the actual author of the game. Um, we've got guys from, uh, from, for example, FASA Games are going to be running games there. Um, if you're a Call of Cthulhu fan, you may be able to get in on a game being run by Chaosium, for example. And then we've got a wide variety of games being run by, you know, just regular GMs that want to come in and find people that want to play their favorite game or maybe one of their old school games that they enjoy and can't find players locally for. Uh, we have every year, we always have guys doing first edition. Uh, for the last three or four years, we've had guys running Car Wars. Uh, we've had uh, Traveler. Um, We've got a lot of Savage Worlds going on. Uh, just a great variety of games available. Now, if you're a game master and you want to run your game, we have, boy, have I got a deal for you. We have what we call... <laughs> I've got a deal for deal. you. <laughs> we have the GM's early registration bundle. Uh, we've still got space in there. But the first 20 GMs that sign up are going to get this bundle, and it's got over 30 items in it. Uh, these are PDF items um, that are provided by the publisher to encourage uh, GMs to sign up. Um, we've got uh, Call of Cthulhu Keeper's Rulebook in PDF. Um, we've got Children of the Apocalypse, uh, War Song Second Edition from from Happy Monster uh, from uh, Higher Grounds. Uh, sorry, Children of the Apocalypse from uh, Happy Monster Press. Um, we've got. Uh, the BX Essentials core rules from uh, Necrotic Gnome. We have a whole stack of things from Pyromaniac Press. Yes. Um, <laughs> you noticed that, did you? Yeah, that's, that's a pretty big stack of stuff. Um, Sly Flourish is in there with uh, their fantastic locations and uh, the Lazy Dun Ma Dungeon Master's workbook, among other things. Um, Story Weaver Games has a new edition of Hail coming out, and they've got a second edition available for that. And if you want to get in, come over and sign up your game, get registered with us, and we've still got some of those available. If, uh, if you go to our Facebook page and you click on the Book Now button there, that'll take, you right to, that'll take you to the GM Playbook, which has a link to the registration form. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see that on the left-hand side uh, in the menu under Really Cool Stuff, and I should also be on the horizontal menu across the very top. But they're both very easy to find. Now, but, suppose okay. you're not a GM. Suppose you just want to come out and play RPGs. You want to try out some games. You can't find anybody in your area that plays them. I got another deal for you. Another deal? <laughs> Tell us, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, September 30th. We are doing the kickoff for our player early registration. Uh, not only do we have a bundle similar to the GM bundle with different stuff in it, um, but in addition to that, not only do we have that, but if you come out to the Ethercon website on September 30th for our player early registration kickoff, we're having a kickoff party, and we're going to have door prizes. And you're going to be able to win actual physical stuff that we're going to get sent out to you from the publishers. Dyson Glory Core, core Rulebook, uh, the Hale Second Edition Core Rulebook. We have this really cool 
Stainless steel chainmail dice bag from Kitten Soft Chainmail. But somebody's going to win. So come right. on out and get registered as a player. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> there is more because we have about a dozen various prize bundles available. If you download the convention magazine, you get entered to win a prize. If you participate in an open game that's not one of the uh, structured games like Pathfinder Society or something like that, you get mm -hmm. registered for a prize. If you play a game that's run by a publisher that's got something coming new to market, you get registered for the Innovators Bundle that has new products in it. If you vote for the, uh, the miniatures competition or in the speed painting duels, you get registered for prizes for those. If you sign up for our social media, you get registered for a prize. We got prizes coming out of our ears. <laughs> another place. No. Uh, <laughs> just our ears. You don't want them coming out of any other place. Yeah, you know, so I got we we do have somebody in the in the chat room. Uh it's a, a friend of mine, uh Spence, and she's she's uh part of the game school crowd. Oh, man. There's two of you. I I, I don't know where it's coming from, but um, she was saying that uh, that there's there's a couple games she mentioned that should be in there, and and, and we don't control the games that go in there. Uh, they have to sign up for them. So anyone wants to suggest to those people that they sign up a game? Hey, we'd love to have you. Urban Shadows, uh, she mentioned, and Children of the Fall, two great, fantastic games, would be very, very welcome if they came in and ran games uh, at she, 830. Does she want our registered to run a game? That's what I said. I put a thing in there. I said, Spitz, you should run one of these. She could run uh, uh, Children of the Fall. That was a... Short of the Fall is a really cool game. So where this is coming from is that uh, we have the, one of the sister shows, The Mythwits, uh, the, the premier um, podcast, the uh, flagship podcast, TSR Podcast Network, uh, is, uh, is called Game School. And we teach people how to play games uh, for Game School. And we featured quite a few games. And a couple of the games we featured this season are really awesome. Um, Children of the Fall being one of them. That was a really, really good episode. And... You know that would be a fun one to see people run, especially it's it's very interactive. It's it's um, it's it's actually kind of like round robin storytelling. So that would be a really really cool game to see, and it would be perfect for online because there's really um, the dice. The dice have something to do with it, but they're less important than the storytelling, which is great for interactive. Just you know this, this type of interactive environment. Oh yeah. One of the great things about having an online convention is we don't run out of tables. Right. Yeah, this is that's true. Not in the fact that the fire, not in the fact the fire marshal don't have dick to do. There's that. Well, if he if he does, it's not our problem. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. If somebody pulls the fire alarm and you have to run out of your house, you're the only one. <laughs> you only have yourself to blame. That's true. That's true. All right, so we got one more thing on my list, and that's uh, Anvil Alley. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hey, Stephen, did, did we talk about uh, Cleric Fighter Wizard Rogue? Is that is that something you want to talk about? That is, that is Anvil Alley. Oh, oh, I always get confused with these. All right, all right so go ahead, go ahead, Stephen. Don't let me jump on your feet there. Uh, I, if you don't mind, I I, I also, uh, after, I, after I do this, uh, if we could just go around and, and you know, what are what's everyone playing right now? Okay, you want to do that now? Well, no, after Anvil Alley. Okay, well, you okay. Can kind of close with that. Um, Anvil Alley is our miniature arm. Uh, we've had that for um, four years now. This is our fourth. And as a part of Anvil Alley, anyone who's in Anvil Alley, uh, there's only sixteen of them. They need to go into Cleric Fighter Wizard Rogue, which is our miniature painting journey. Uh, all of these uh, entrants are miniature companies. They're not private citizens. They're miniature companies who actually make the miniatures and paint them, what have you. Um, this is a basically is a is a showcase for them. It's set up very much like uh, the recently completed World Cup of Soccer. So you have a draw show, which we had uh, last Tuesday, and we will be announcing the grid tomorrow. For 
Um, just like they do with the World Cup, where, oh, and Belgium gets into this group, and Germany gets into that group. We have that. We are, we just run that. Uh, and that'll, like I say, that'll be revealed tomorrow. Um, and then, you know, so you have group play, and then you have the knockout rounds, two of them, semifinal and a final. Um, each of these group matches, the semifinal, are one of the four different miniatures, a clerical fighter, a wizard, and a rogue. And the final is the ensemble. Um, uh, last year, Demented Games from Australia won it. Uh, but we've run it for three different years, and we have had champions from three different continents. The first year was Royal Partha Europe from the UK. Uh, second year was, uh, oh, geez, free. I uh, know I can't. Have, it's uh, DGS Games. DGS <clears throat> Games from the US. Uh, and uh, last year, as mentioned, it was Demented Games from Australia. Um, so, I mean, uh, stay tuned to find out who it is this year. And as Ed mentioned, you know, you can vote on each of these. Okay, this is how uh, people how how we know who wins each group match and who doesn't. And every time you vote, you can vote. I believe there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's fourteen different matches you can vote in. Uh, and so you can every time you vote, you have the you have the option of qualifying for the Anvil Alley bundle. Uh, we started offering that two years ago, and it was just over 70, like 72 miniatures. Last year it was 68. This year, I can tell you it's probably going to be over 70 again, given what we already have. So that's going to be really big. And there's another, there's also uh, for the, you know, I mentioned that he also mentioned for prize support, there's one for voting on the Speed Angels as well. Um, in any case, uh, I just thought that we should get that out there. Uh, okay. Stay tuned for the announcement of the groups tomorrow. And, uh, yeah. All right. So so what's everybody gaming on? Um, who wants to go first? Steven, you're up. Why don't you go first? What, do you, what What's your game? What's your plan now? Right now, I am about to start a Pathfinder campaign with... Uh, Lost Spheres Publishing Guru Christian and Sowards. That's the guy's last name. I've I've met in the past week about twelve different Chris's or Christians, and I can't keep anybody's name straight. I'm like I kid you not. I just think everybody's name in the in the in the game publishing business has been changed to Chris or Christian. Whoa! That Steven's is, on fire. Is, that was somebody pulling the fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> so you're playing a Pathfinder campaign. Uh, that one, yes. But also, I'm uh, uh, I'm also in a uh, Darwin's World campaign. But the one I really, really like that I'm playing uh, is 2D20 Infinity. Okay. I just recently discovered that, and I say that in quotes. I mean, obviously, it's been out there for a while, but I only came across it, you know, a few months ago. Um, in that uh, in that game, I play a a Russian a, a Russian corsair trader smuggler. Uh, and they, they, they speak they speak so. It is a is 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 good to make crazy crazy thing, and and he speaks with a a real real heavy Russian accent. Right. He thinks he speaks a lot of languages. Well, he does speak a lot of languages. He speaks a lot of languages badly. Okay, uh, almost as bad as your Russian, right? <laughs> it's uh, I have to get into it before before game time. I'm much usually much better at it. Okay, but uh, is. Uh, is good. Is it you drink coffee with 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 special coffee? This this make people go sleepy time and is 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 good. Right. And then it, so yes, there's the this guy the at the he tends to fight very dirty. Uh, okay. He uh, he fakes a limp. He has a cane. 
uh, with a big ball on the end of it, and he tends to use that and a pair people? of brass knuckles. Oh yeah. Okay. The first first time the party ran into him, he uh, he he limped up to someone, got them off guard, cracked them in the cracked them the nuts with the cane, and then floored them with the uh, brass knuckles he carries in his left pocket. Okay. And then he and then he limped back to the party. All right. All right. So Edward, Edward, what you playing? Okay. So I'm not actively playing right now because I'm in the middle of putting the finishing touches on the adventure that I'm planning on running for Aethercon this year. Um, first edition. I will say too much about it, but it's sort of a cross between Murder on the Orient Express and an episode of Scooby-Doo. Okay. All right. All right. Rot row. <laughs> All right. Cool. And, uh, and John, what you playing? Uh, my group is... Running through uh, one of the uh, which one of the Fey Run things from Legends of the Coast, Horde of the Dragon Queen, I think it's called. We basically lost our cleric. That's going to throw a monkey wrench into absolutely everything we've gone because we started off with the first level characters. We got we've made our way through this thing up to eleventh level, and now yeah. our cleric is dead. So we have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, hopefully, we can get his body back to Waterdeep and pay a bunch of really high-level uh, priests to get him back in running order, or we're going to have to retire some people the hard way. We'll see. <laughs> retire them the hard way. All right. So in our chat room, being that we have we have two, we have David Benavides. He's he's like, yeah, hey, maybe I'll GM something. Fantastic, David. Love to have you. David's a great GM. He's actually what's won the Iron GM contest once. What's in, what's uh, what's his game of choice? Uh, he runs every. I, I don't know. I, he he does all kinds of stuff. He's like I said. He, he's an Iron GM man. He'll run anything. I've seen him. Hey, trying to remember what what I've seen him run before, but it's it's. You know, he, he'll do D&D, of course, and Pathfinder and such, but he'll do other things as well. Spence, uh, who's in our chat room as well, says, if anyone's interested, she's in a and d 5e campaign playing a trickster cleric gnome named Weasel. I like that. And, and she plays an Urban Shadows game on Discord with a friend where part of a tabletop campaign, but when that game was done, our characters still had story to tell. We've been doing this for two years now. Two years. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, my game... So what we're playing is uh, we're playing a game that you've probably maybe never heard of. Uh, it's been around a long time. It's by a company called Blacksburg Technical Research Center, or BTRC. Uh, most people know them when I say guns, 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 which was this book that you could make any kind of weapon, uh, but you needed a math degree to use it. But their game Core, which um, is a it's a very if you're a a gamer gearhead, so this is old school Grocknard shit. This is like uh, you know. Uh, there aren't any charts, but like there, I. <laughs> there aren't any charts. You have to make your own charts yeah. if you try to figure out how not to blow yourself up. That's this true. Is like college advanced chemistry, man. Yeah, it kind kind of. If you've ever played a, a BTRC game before, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but we we love it. Um, and the the setting is a pre cyberpunk. Uh, so it's it's. We're seeing cyberpunk happen before our eyes. So they're just – they just in, – uh, in the world, they just introduced AVs, so the, the, the vertical lift vehicles uh, like you see in Blade Runner, and the first cybernetics uh, we've encountered. And just to be fun, uh, they've thrown a little bit of Delta Greenish type stuff into the, to the mix. So we've run into some stuff that's somewhat supernatural. So it's been a pretty good campaign. It's coming to a close, though, because I think in the next couple of months, it's whenever the next uh, Modifius Star Trek book comes out. I can't remember which one it is, but it's one of the main books, one of the – it might be medical or tactical or something, whichever one it is. When that comes out, uh, we're going to switch over to Star Trek and start running with the new, uh, the new Modifius Star Trek, the, the 2D20. So pretty excited about that. Now, so I, what do you our, think of the 2D20 system? Uh, I like the sounds of it. I haven't played it yet, but I do like I do like the way it's described. Uh, I like the idea of the mechanics. Um, and there's a there's a neat mechanic in the Star Trek system where um, you can play the NPCs, and then they, that allows the NPCs to level up. So you don't always have to play your character. Like say for example, you're playing um, you're playing the Doctor, 
and you are tired of always sitting around waiting to heal people and you want to get in the mix, uh, you could be one of the NPCs. You could be one of the red shirts that goes down on planet. And that's what you would play that night. Uh, and if you get killed, you get killed. Not a big deal. But if you survive, uh, your char that red shirt actually levels up and becomes a better red shirt. And eventually can become a new, you know, like a full-on player character. And you might say, I'm going to start playing this guy now. So that is a really cool mechanic. I love that a lot. It gives you the opportunity to do a whole bunch of different stuff. So our plans, or at least my plan is when we start the campaign, I'm going to make up uh, one crew member from each branch as an NPC, and then I will pick one of them when everybody else has done their characters. I will decide which one I want to actually play as my main character, and then I will play the other ones throughout the campaign um, just for fun. So if, if uh, you need somebody down in engineering, I can pull out my engineer character and go, uh, I can do that, right? And then, um, but I'm a secondary, you know, he wouldn't be the main engineer, but, you know, he might be the guy that goes down the Jeffrey tubes to go fix something. So I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's a really cool concept for a game. Well, you know, I, what I want to know is whether they have a game mechanic called, I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer, Jim. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what was that, Edward? Uh, you look like you're gonna say. I thought you're gonna say something. Nope. Nope. Okay. Never mind. Maybe it was John. Uh, somebody went to say something. What I want to say is that if I remember my next gen correctly, and I may not, um, Beverly Crusher had absolutely no problem picking up a phaser and blowing shit up when she needed to. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's it's that's true. But I mean, it's the beauty of it is you can make a character concept. So if you're like. You're like, oh, I really want to make a. Uh, I'd love to play like a Klingon once in a while, but I don't want to play a Klingon every game. Like, I don't want to be that man. I don't want that to be my main game because it's hard for me to stay in that character. But I would love to play a Klingon once in a while. Uh, you could make up like a, I don't know, maybe a Klingon security officer if you wanted to go down that road. Uh, and then, you know, if, if there was an away mission and you were like, well, if they're not going to take the main doctor, which is what I'm playing, let's, uh, I want to take my Klingon down as the, uh, as the security officer, you know, or, or whatever. So I think that would be fun. It's just you get into other characters. And again, if, if the character gets killed, it's not the biggest deal in the world. I mean, it sucks because it's, you know, one of the people you made up, but it's not like your main character. So that's, that's fine. I, I challenge you to make a Klingon medic. You could do it. We talked about that. Actually, we joked about that. We were just like, they're like, you're going to give him anesthesia? No, he's going to fight through the pain. It's good for him. <laughs> you know. Or else you use your bat left. As a right. scalpel. As a scalpel. There's no saving him. Send him right. to, to right. the gods. You must right. take off the arm. Right. Right. It's like, prepare him for surgery, and you pull up the bat lift. No, 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 no. What? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, there, there's that. There's all kinds of fun stuff. Or, or a, uh, you know, a, um, who are the ones that are impasse? The uh, Betazoids? Oh, Betazoids. Yeah, I think a Betazoid doctor would suck because you would always be like, oh, God, it's so negative. It's so horrible down in the medical wing. I can feel every pain. Like a goth. Oh, yes, you could play like a goth Betazoid who works in the medical area, right? That would be awesome. <laughs> Right. I would pay to play that character in any game anyone yeah. wants to come up with. <laughs> yeah, I, know, like, I, might, I, might, I might GM that game just to put that character in there. Nice, so nice. I need, I need to think very carefully about that. If Feyron <laughs> turns out to be retired at some point. No, it's sweet. You're not really <laughs> sick, are you? Come on. I know <laughs> you're not really sick. You just don't right. want to go on duty today. <laughs> right. All right, everybody, we're at time. Uh, uh, links. So AetherCon.com, of course, is the, your main uh, home for this. Everything's AetherCon now, right? I think Facebook now is Facebook forward slash AetherCon, right? Uh, yeah. YouTube is forward slash AetherCon. Um, anything else? Oh, Any so other links? Uh, Facebook is AetherCon RPG. Okay, AetherCon it's RPG. Oh, gee whiz. Now I have to go look it up. All right. <laughs> but there's also... Uh, there's also... On Facebook. Okay. okay. On uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, Google. Uh, it is... Looks like Aethercon Online Tabletop RPG Con. I can't be that. Uh, but it's something. Oh, hold on a second. I'll just click there. Really? Okay. If you search on Google for Aethercon, you will find it. Right, it, right, right. 
Okay. And and Twitter. Uh, what about what about the Twitter? Are you on the Z Twitter? Uh, Twitter is simply AetherCon. All right, fantastic. Uh, All right, also, you guys are getting the. We also have a Facebook page, which is or not Facebook, uh, Pinterest. God darn it! What do you want, Kitty? Go away. Um. Uh, yeah, I know. Kitty's uh, always wanted to. It's easy. It's AetherCon on Pinterest and on YouTube. It it's is, AetherCon. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah, because I changed. I, I did that, so I know it's that. <laughs> it's All true. Right. Yes. All right, everybody, let's wrap this up. Here we go. Um, you have just enjoyed The Kickwits. Make sure to catch our regular live show, The Mythwits, on Facebook, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can ask our guest questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, if you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. Like we talked about Game School tonight, make sure you check that out. It's a great show. If you're into this, you would be into that. Um... Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And, uh, you know, don't play it at a convention. Uh, <laughs> make sure to check out Aetherforge.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for checking this out. And if you're actually watching the credits, then don't kid yourself. You want to go to this thing. Go. Go. This. It's, it's uh, uh, November, what, 11th to... Uh, uh, 13th? 9th to the 11th. 9th to the 11th. And, uh, I it's, it's... the dates on my spreadsheet to match. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And you can always catch all the Encore stuff of AetherCon. You can go... Hey, you want to see what we do? Go check out the YouTube page right now. All the videos are there. They're broken down in playlists for seasons and all that kind of stuff. We just did a summer roundtable series where we interviewed one person every... Well, uh, one company every week... All summer long, and they're all great interviews. Trust me. Good stuff. So thanks, guys, for joining us. Um, everybody, we'll see you next time. I'm going to do the Vanna White thing here. Bye. There we go. Yeah.